So this is a cereal recipe. It can also be had as a dessert or a dinner in itself. It is rather heavy. If you're having it as a dessert before your dinner, as we do in Ayurveda, you're going to have a smaller portion because it is a little bit heavy. Um, some of the ingredients that we will be using is the white lotus seed, which you can find hopefully at the Asian market or Indian market. I had to go to five different stores in the East Bay to find this. <laughs> so um, you can look online. The type of lotus that you want is the sacred lotus or Nelumbo, Nelumbo sacred lotus. And do you want the, yes, it's N-E-L-U-M-B-O. Nelumbo sacred lotus, N-E-L, U M B O. But if you're in the Asian market, that may not be on the package. So this I found at the Ranch 99 shopping center. It was not actually in Ranch 99. If you can find a Chinese herbal market, they will have it there. But they may not have it anywhere else. Um, these have been split in half. So, so that they will cook a little faster, we can pass them around shortly. We also are working with couscous, a wheat product. I think all of you are familiar with that. And we are going to use mystery, although mystery is the rock candy, although you can use um, turbinado or organic cane sugar, or you can even use the jaggery that you sampled. Um, and then saffron and cardamom and some shatawari. Does anyone want to shatawari? I'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute. Does anyone want to pass this around? So we're specifically using the lotus seed as different parts of the lotus do different things. So this is a lotus root and it has um, the same action of clearing the channels as the seed does, but the root can also be like vata aggravating, which is drying to the body. So you always want to cook this in ghee and with some onions so that it's a little more grounding. The seeds are for all three doshas, so it won't aggravate the dryness of the body. And it is also appropriate for children. When we talk about shukra datu, it's not just for adults. It's for children, and it will help them form their healthy tissues and make sure that they're strong. Um, oh yes, please pass it around. So we're going to heat the milk separately because when you add hot and cold together, it's like a miniature nuclear explosion and we don't want that inside of our body because it creates a uh, disturbance in the fat tissue. So a trick to not burning your milk is first washing your pot out with a bit of cold water and then um, not drying it, just letting the cold water be in there and then pouring your milk and then turning on your flame. Hopefully. Oh, no, because I'm doing the wrong one. Okay. So milk is heating and we will be doing That one doesn't want to do anything. We'll have our saute pan. We'll have our ghee. And this recipe keeps on growing. So if you're just cooking for yourself, <laughs> don't um, use too much couscous because you'll be eating for a long time and you'll be really full. So I'm adding um, about a teaspoon of ghee. You can play with this recipe a little bit if you like. It's not exact. Teaspoon and a half. And I'm going to turn this on a medium low flame because these lotus seeds, if they get too dark, they'll get a little bitter.
So I am adding one cup of lotus leaf. And I'm adding about a fourth of a teaspoon of saffron. And I'm adding one teaspoon of shatavari, S H A T A. <laughs> Hold on, I have to remember where I am. S H A T A V A R I. I'm adding one teaspoon. The dosage is half a teaspoon per cup of milk. If you do more than that, it'll be too bitter. And it's more than your body needs. Shatavari, it's an herb. You can, it's in the asparagus family, they're related. Um, you can purchase it online, I think is the best place. There's Banyan Botanicals, maybe you're familiar with. There's Mountain Rose Herbs. There is Star West. Botanicals, and they have some nice organic um, Ayurvedic herbs. Shatavari means one who possesses or is able to have 100 husbands. So if you are in a relationship, I mean, you know how demanding your partner can be even emotionally. Let's say this is going to give you some mental strength as well as some physical strength. It's it's generally thought of as an herb for women. Um, it increases the breast milk, but just because we say it's for women doesn't mean it's not for men. It's just particularly wonderful for women. It it increases the longevity and the um, health of the skin. We are going to have a class on it, a whole morning just on Shatavari. I encourage you to come to that class. We'll talk about what the date is soon. Um, and so I'm going to be quite brief in my talking about these herbs and spices because really each one of them you could spend a lifetime studying. <laughs> so one day is, is um, really wonderful to get to study these things. Okay, so we're just waiting. I'll tell you a little bit about milk. You want to have a cow's milk. It's considered the best of the milks in Idoid. And it is considered life-giving. It rejuvenates our tissues. It um, slows down the aging process. It's sweet and it's heavy and unctuous. And um, because of its heaviness, we always want to heat it because give, adding the heat aids our digestion. And we also add spices and things, as you'll see. Uh, let's see. It is vata and pitta decreasing. And it's also important to know that different, different animals living in different places will give your milk different qualities. So we're not going to talk about all the different animals and all their different qualities today. Um, but it's really important to have organic milk or uh, a cow share where you know that your cow has been out in the pasture having grass, that your cow is a happy cow because you're Taking in that energy as well, it's going to affect your digestion, even though it's subtle. Um, another note on milk. You don't want to get anything that has vitamin D added to it. A lot of the time, um, the vitamin D is derived from the fish oil. And fish oil... Fish oil is called a varudahar with milk. It's one of the foods that doesn't go together because it causes ill health. So now I'm adding my saute to 
Oh, yes, just how much I fried. So you just want it lightly golden. Can everyone see that? No? About? Yeah, come and, and take a look. So it's lightly golden. You don't you don't want it to get too dark. The the lotus already has a bit of bitterness to it, and if it gets burnt, it, that that bitterness will be greatly increased. Sorry, my milk's about to go overboard, so um, it may go overboard anyway. Uh, you want your lotus seed to, to have um, time to get soft. So I'm going to put it in the milk and let it cook together to soften the lotus seed. So in the splitting of the lotus seed, you can use a knife. I thought that was really dangerous. So <laughs> I, I crushed it with the knife as one would crush garlic. Um, something I do with my daughters because they don't like lotus seed is that I um, I put it in the coffee grinder, the spice grinder, and I make a flour out of it. And I'll add that to hot spice milk or I'll add that to a cereal recipe like what we're making right now. And so if, if this is a strange taste to you, I think that's another option. You really don't, you really don't notice, notice it. But I think it's nice to try new things. So we're going to do it this way today. So that's going to cook on the very low heat, as low as you can go. And then we're going to um, saute the couscous. When you um, fry the wheat, dry fry the wheat, it lightens the wheat. Wheat is considered heavy. Um, it's sweet, nourishing. It repairs um, the tissues and helps bone fractures heal. It's a really important part of our diet. It's not something you want to ever necessarily cut out. Um, even in weight loss, there are appropriate ways to have wheat. Um, so just to counteract some of the heaviness of wheat, we're going to do this dry fry here. This is, a, this is a cup of couscous. So you want to do one part lotus seed, one part couscous. This is, of course, best in winter time. Um, of, you know, it's very much dependent on your agni. Um, how much is your body able to digest at the time? Our digestion is always stronger in the winter. But I would say if your digestion is strong enough, this would be something you want to incorporate into your daily diet. That's when you're going to get the most benefit from it. Um, if you have a weaker digestion, of course, you want to eat a smaller portion of it. Really boiling away. Who knew these are such powerful things? Um, <laughs> so... I wanted to say something, I forgot that. Right. So Ayurveda has the concept of, of cleansing the body. When the body is overloaded, of course, we cannot digest this heavy nutrient. So there is the concept of cleansing, and then there is the concept of nourishing. This is, we're focusing on the concept of nourishing. If you need to do some toxic cleanup, um, taking some classes here, or finding one of our graduates who has their private practice, or coming to our community clinic would be a great way um, to get on board with that. Or the weight loss um, segment that is going to be starting in May, I'm sure that will be focusing a great deal on cleaning up your system. So even if you don't, you guys have to tell me if this is a correct assumption of mine, but even if you don't have to lose weight, if you have some slow digestion and toxic buildup, do you think that the weight loss um, 
intensive day would be appropriate for for um pattern. Do you think that would be appropriate? Yeah, maybe. Okay. To be okay. Okay. To be decided. So that with the couscous, you just want it to be a light golden color. Also, how you did the the lotus. When are we having the shatavari class? October, November. Okay, so stay tuned. Shatavari is a very important herb. It's something that all women should be having daily in a small quantity. Definitely, it's going to support women post menopause, before menopause, during menopause. Yes. Shatavari is sweet and heavy, but it also has a bitter quality. And the bitterness balances out the, the heaviness and the sweetness so that it doesn't become too heavy for the digestion. Okay. Yes, pitta and vata pacifying. Mm -hmm. And then when you add something like, let's say you have a kapha person who wants to take shatavari, maybe they would add some shunti, some, some dry ginger powder, or maybe even a little bit of black pepper, or they could use cardamom and, um, and a little bit of ginger. And then that would make it more digestible and appropriate for that kapha, kapha person or someone with a um, slower digestion. So this is getting nice and golden now. And we're going to be ready to combine this with our milk and lotus seed. Everyone see that? Yeah? Okay. So in it goes. Or not using mystery. I changed my mind because I forgot to put it in the milk. <laughs> Whoops. Right. Um, so if you want to use mystery, you can put it whole into the milk when you're boiling the milk, or you can put your mystery through the spice grinder and make a powder from it and use it that way. So I'm going to use, this is one tablespoon. So I'm gonna use two tablespoons. This is really to your preference here, what you like. Um, Where would you? get mystery and what would you look for because I don't think the trade name is mystery is it mystery so mystery is rock candy it's so the sugar is cooling and mystery is a super refrigerant it's extra cooling and it it is actually um, a little bit lighter on the digestion than regular uh, organic cane sugar would be, would be which is, is why it's uh, rather desirable. Um, you can find it at the Indian store. I 
I am unclear if all rock candy is made the same way. It seems that Mystery has some special way that they make it. And I'm going to do more research on this. So I think Indian Market is the best place to find them. What about using um, coconut sugar? Coconut sugar. So coconut sugar is not derived from cane. It's sweet. Coconut is fatty. I think you can use that if you like. Uh, the quality is maybe slightly different, but it's still going to be nourishing to the body. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to taste this and see if I put enough sugar in here for you. Oh, thank you. I think it's okay. You'll have to tell me what you think. Hmm? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I think I think this is okay. Yeah. We'll do this. The lotus is definitely different than our um, some of our western tongues may be used to for questions while we're plating up anyone yes anybody just going to a little bit of cardamom on top of each where, wherever that thing just went Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you mention the uh, qualities of lotus seed, the healing properties? Yeah, I'll, I'll go over that. Let I'll tell you when, when you're tasting. Um, let's see. So lotus is uh, directly related to increasing the shukra dhatu. It's also um, been used in mental imbalance, like schizophrenia and really serious mental imbalance. Um, oh, sorry. And I, I'll, I'm doing too many things at once, so <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a good idea. You know how to do that. Sure. Okay, I'll talk. So, <laughs> um, it's light to digest. It has a cooling action. It um, is, is oily and, and sweet, but it also has a bitter taste that balances that oiliness and that sweetness. So it's actually an anti-poison for the body. It clears the channels without depleting the body. Like chili peppers would clear the channels, but it would also deplete the body at the same time. So building the shukradatu, we want something that's going to clean up but also protect our vitality. Um, it promotes a libido. It increases the beauty of the skin, directly benefits the brain function. Um, it has been used in the mental disturbances, as I mentioned, and it's also uh, really important for growth. So in children, it's particularly beneficial. Different parts of the lotus, as I said earlier, have different benefits. The seed is the one that is balanced. It's not going to be aggravating to any part of the system. The leaves, the roots, the petals, they have a maybe a slightly drying quality to them. So we need to be more conscientious of how and who we give those parts of the lotus to. So it is a tree though, Shahar. It is pacifying for vata, pitta, and kapha. Anyone have any more questions about lotus? Yes? Just the to show. The, and the root was just for demonstration. Yeah, the lotus is such a very interesting plant. Yeah. And it, it would be nice to cut this open, actually. Uh, maybe you can see a little bit right here. 
um, but it has these holes, which I, I like to think, oh, so the root is for clearing my channels, and here it is with these open channels. And it's wonderful to eat, particularly in the autumn, when the heat is really intense. Um, and there's more of an, you know, when in the autumn when you're really hot, and you've also got this like sticky, oily thing going on. Do any of you experience that in the autumn? Yes. So lotus root is going to help with that wonderfully. And you can still have the lotus seed with your morning breakfast. This cereal, it's made a little bit dry this time, so it's almost like a halwa. Um, you can add more milk and make it more, um, more like a traditional cereal um, and, and almost more liquid. And we have sprinkled ala, cardamom, on top. Cardamom is um, vata and kapha pacifying, and it, um, it is going to increase the digestive qualities of this meal as this meal is rather heavy. So a little bit of the cardamom on top is great. And if you use cardamom with milk, it then becomes pitta pacifying. And so cardamom has a katu, a pungent taste, and a cooling action. And it has a light, it's light to digest. Um, I love how it has a pungent taste, but then it has a cooling action. The plant is directly balancing itself. I love seeing the herbs and spices doing that. And then we also have the saffron in here. And the Spanish saffron is considered to be of superior quality. Um, it's pungent and bitter and light, and it has an oiliness to it. And it alleviates all three doshas and promotes secretions and improves complexion and hyperpigmentation. So you'll actually find saffron in some high-end beauty products um, for hyperpigmentation. But also eating it is going to um, increase your blood quality, which is responsible for uh, the pigmentation of our skin. And it's a stimulant, an appetizer, aphrodisiac and digestive, and it relieves headaches. So if you have, or you are a person who gets a lot of headaches or migraines, this is something that would be nice for you to have in your hot spice milk or in your cereal as a kind of daily preventative. Um, and then it becomes balancing and nourishing when it's cooked with milk. By itself, saffron would be heating and aggravating for the pitta dosh. But when it's cooked with the milk, it becomes balancing, just like Cardamom. Okay. Yes. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> so did you use uh, green or black cardamom? Oh. So in the scriptures, we mostly use the, I've only seen the green cardamom referred to for medicinal purposes. The black cardamom is really for savory cooking, and it's much hotter. So it can be aggravating to the pitta dosh. And it's um, the black cardamom we would want to use more in the winter months and in the spring months. Not in the summer, not in the autumn. And what did you, and what did you say when the, you add milk to the cardamom? What does it do to it? Okay, so cardamom is vata and kapha balancing. So... It can be pitta aggravating if you have too much of it, but cardamom is pretty a pretty gentle spice. Like as compared to black pepper, cardamom is so gentle. Yeah, so it's really not going to be that pitta aggravating, but if you cook it with milk, it's going to become pitta pacifying. So it's going to cool the heat in the body while increasing the digestive ability. And we always want to promote our digestive ability have really strong, good Agni. Even in a person that is really hot, um, they can still have the poor Agni. And then you're going to see things like skin conditions and allergies and puffy eyes and hives and all that fun stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> can I answer any more questions? What do you guys think? 
Can we okay. say J Ma? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's very nice, okay. nice, light, and digestible, it feels like. Good. <laughs> yeah. So thank you all for being here. That concludes our Sangha. So if we can give a big round of applause to Shreya. Thank you.